Hey, what's up, Briefers? Today we're going to talk about the 17 gallon mangrove tank. Now, you may see a jacket being hung behind the tank haphazardly. And the reason we're doing that is because I can better show you guys the corals and macroalgae and inverts better. Uh, later, I'm going to remove it when we talk about the mangrove. This video, we're going to focus on the 17 gallon mangrove tank and macroalgae tank and to see how it has been doing. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive on this. So, a bit of bad news first, as you may have spotted already, uh, in terms of the blue back, blue eyed dwarf rainbow fish, we only got one left. For the last couple of weeks, uh, they have been slowly disappearing one by one. To be honest, it's really tough to say exactly what happened. If I were to guess, I may have guessed predation by something. Either it's corals or the really, really large bristol worms that I have in this tank. But at the same time, bristol worms is usually known as detritus eater, meaning that they don't really actively go after live things, so that may not be it. But bottom line is that I am down to one single female in here. It is just something really sad to see is because like they're swimming well, eating well, and seems perfectly healthy uh, in this tank. And then all of a sudden one is gone. And a couple days later, another one is gone. It, it's the oddest thing. But like I mentioned, just look at this. I do have Bristol worms in this tank that's, uh, that are pretty bold. And one of them is actually like this long. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking about using a trap to kind of pull out some of the larger Bristol worm just to be double safe. Fish aside, the macroalgae and corals are actually doing really, really well in this tank. Two and a half weeks ago, I was having issue with the prolifious macroalgae in the back right there where they were melting. However, like I mentioned in that video as well, macroalgae tend to grow back really, really fast. As you can see here in the back, they already kind of started establishing itself again and started really propagating over here. Same thing over here. A runner actually came all the way out here and the leaves are already grown this much. So in terms of macroalgae, there are a couple different types in this tank. I uh, really wanted to focus on red macro because I think they're beautiful, especially offset against the green ones. Um, I'm a little bit lacking in the green department, but they are growing back. So for red macros, I got four main types in this tank. I got these spiny guys right here. I got these leafy guys right here. And I got those flowy guys right there. And of course, I got those bubbly ones right there. In terms of green macros, I got a couple different types here, like the prolifious that I mentioned before. Uh, another type I really like is actually these palm tree macroalgae. They really look like those feta calibras, but not to be confused with them because these palm tree ones is much slower growing. However, at the same time, I do notice that they melt a lot easier. If I don't prune them back, they just melt right away. So I prune these guys pretty aggressively, but they also grow really, really aggressively. For example, this branch right here was grown within this week, uh, and the week is not even over this is thursday so four days they grow from like a little nub to this size another really interesting green macro i have here is actually the shaving brush that's been doing really well in this tank i started out with about three branches and as you can see it sent out all these little shoot right here there's actually another shoot right here but then i guess i didn't do well and just collapsed so overall the macro algae has been doing really well trying to find a footing and seems to be growing in and i've been dosing brightwell's cheta growth at least twice a week because um in the past when the macro algae is melting uh people are saying that i need to prune it and also i need to make sure there's enough fertilizer or nutrient in the water otherwise they're gonna melt off in terms of corals they're all doing well although i don't see any super explosive growth although the green tree ladder seems to be doing a lot happier nowadays than compared to a couple months before i actually see some uh, small branches coming out as well but one problematic thing that i noticed that this uh, ladder colony does is that once in a while it will shed its mucus it will get stuck on other things now i sometimes see stringy stuff that's kind of hanging off uh, sometimes i wonder whether those are mucus from the ladder or whether those are bacteria bloom because like if bacteria bloom sometimes you get stringy stuff around the tank that's how you can tell uh, so it's kind of hard to tell which is which but i do see sometimes that mucus do come off this ladder colony so that's one thing that i'm not crazy about however i feel like just by how cool it looks it's totally worth the extra effort whenever i see that sometimes i'll drop a small bag of uh, activated carbon inside that uh, sunless ato to kind of try pulling out any possible toxins and stuff like that and i'll run some floss as well to pull, pull out any particulates the other corals that's doing fantastic is definitely these pulsing zinnias now i know zinnia is one of those uh controversial topics or controversial corals uh, personally i'm a big fan of zinnias as long as they pulse and lucky for me these guys are pulsing in this tank so yes i have no problem with zinnia taking over the whole tank if he wants a whole tank so 
Grow on and keep pulsing, Xenius. Here's another coral that I don't talk about too much. This is called the potato chip coral. That is a common name. And I actually got this frag from uh, Fish of Hex, Travis, probably two and a half, three years ago from one of the frag swaps at that fish place, that pet place. Uh, it has been doing well. I really like the formation, even though it's being taken over by the leather colony right now, but I see that it's trying to branch out to the side, which is cool. To me, I feel like the corals does not always have to be super colorful. Uh, as long as the growth formation is interesting, that is really cool as well. Another coral that has been doing well for me in this tank and also the 135 gallon tank is the Kryptonite Candy Cane Coral down here. There's not too much to say about them besides that they look fantastic and it's a joy to feed because like they do have really obvious feeding response as well. You see the tentacle comes out and just grab on the food and close it up really quickly so they're fun to feed. And right behind the candy cane we have the Christmas Tree Warm Rock that is doing fantastic. I don't think I lost any of the worms after like uh, shaving back the uh, Rasta Soas that have been taken over. And as you can see from up here, you see that there's no longer any white patches up top because I was shaving back all the Rasta Zoas and looks like the Porteous uh, Corals has really taken back um, all the uh, real estate. As you can see, it's totally green now, which is fantastic. I do wish that the worms are a little bit larger and uh, more colorful. Most of my worms are blue or white. I see one or two red ones. Um, so I'm not sure if these worms are actively reproducing. I kind of doubt it, but I am on the lookout for other possible Christmas tree worm rocks. These are pretty expensive nowadays, so I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking around, I'm looking around. And coming over here is one of my prized possession in this tank, and that is a Japanese pink Nepheus. Uh, I got this from Lynn, and Lynn got it from a friend that was shipping her corals. And I believe that if you're interested in something like this, unique coral seems to always have frags on hand, but they do cost a pretty penny. Uh, this frag has pretty much doubled in size uh, since, I think it's like, what, two months ago at this point? So uh, I'm really happy at how fast it's growing. And I do have a tiny frag that kind of came off the first week. And this, I'm still trying to find a chance to get it over to Daniel, but it looks like I may be heading up north at some point for a road trip. So I'll see if it's possible to kind of meet up with him real quick and just kind of drop that frag off for him uh, because it has been super kind to me. Over to the right, we got what I call the blue zinnias. I think it's called Cephalias, I can't pronounce it. This came from my Reef Sensei, Jim, and I believe he got it from Mari. And I do believe that Jim still has more frag if anybody's looking. Right now, we're under blue light, so it's kind of hard to tell. But when this tank is under more white light, this coral is beautiful. It has like a nice velvet blue. And it's interesting too, because like most people run the reef tank in heavy blue now, but there's a whole spectrum that we're missing out on when the light is white color just uh, some of the corals color is just totally different under that kind of light coming down the middle you may have spotted this guy right here so this is a rainbow uh, florida recordia that came from the top shelf aquatic shipment a while back and i decided that this recordia needs to be appreciated up close and personal and that's why i moved it to this mangrove tank i feel like it's gonna spice up the sand bed much nicer i would love to start a florida recordia garden here so i'm just kind of keeping an eye out locally to see if any recordia's rock pop up locally and i'll be sure to snatch it up and add some color to this tank now blue clover is one of those other corals that could turn into a full-blown infestation if not controlled properly um, arguably the blue clover is even harder to control than the zinnias because Xenia, some fish eat them and they're relatively easy to pull out. Where the blue clove, if any polyp floats off, it'll just start a new colony. And as far as I know, I don't think anything actually eats the blue clove. I could be wrong, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but from what I understand that blue clove is a uh, bigger pest than Xenia. But again, I really, really like the look of blue cloves, especially when it covers a rock or whatnot. So I actively plant them into my tank, but again, if you don't want this all over your tank, don't add it to your tank because it's one of those corals that's kind of hard to control. All right, in terms of corals, I've also got a few species of Gorgonians in this tank. Uh, the most obvious one is this guy right here. This is called the Spiny Gorgonian. And this coral has definitely grown a bit since I've got it from LifePlants.com. Uh, you notice those new nubs and the whole colony seems to be a little bit taller, so it is doing well. Although I'm not sure how well it fits in the scape. Um, at some point, I may just kind of lap off the top plant that and move the whole colony to the 135's Gorgonian Garden. Uh, down there, we got a purple frilly. That's a cutting from the 135 gallon tank. It seems to be doing well. I do believe that it has grown a little bit. 
And back there, I actually have uh, two stocks of Corky Finger. They also came from LivePlants.com. It's a uh, growth-wise, it's not the fastest for me in this tank, but it is definitely growing and polyps extended, seems happy. And coming to the side, we do still have the Grubs um, Gorgonia, and that's consistently been doing well for me. All right, I'm gonna peel back the curtain a little bit. So on the side, this is actually the original stock that I planted. You notice that it kind of collapsed by the um, water flow, started growing sideways a little bit. But the cool thing is that you see all these vertical stocks that started coming up, and these look way more natural. And that is one of the reasons why I actually like planting frags and have it grow into the environment, because I feel like that just looks more natural. Just look at this from the front. You see how they kind of come out? It makes sense. It's like, okay, you see this? It's like, oh, it's grown there versus like a random stock I stick in. So at some point, I do believe that I will probably cut off the mother stock and either plant it somewhere else or just kind of trade it or give it away and we'll see. All right, there are a couple other corals and microalgae that did not really go through in this tank. For example, like this uh, purple death pally that I kind of dug up. It was being shaded by the microalgae for a long, long time. That's why it looks kind of sad right now. By the way, these guys are super toxic. Well, I don't want to say super toxic, but they do contain a decent amount of pally toxin contained to other pal compared to other pallies and zoas. So got to be careful. Uh, we do have the rasta zoas which were also shaded for quite a bit. So they're kind of settling back in. Same thing with that right there. I think that's actually uh, Devil's Armor, I believe, uh, Pallies or Zoas. So these guys kind of recovering and there are little things like here and there that I have not really touched on yet, but this video is getting a little bit long. So I'm gonna chop it off here. I'm gonna, let me remove the jacket and we can talk about the mangrove and the system as a whole. So the mango tree has been doing well. Uh, it actually, added another tier of leaves since the last video update on this tank. So this is like, for example, right here, the casing actually just dropped. Usually they have like this brand out casing, they'll drop first and then the leaves will kind of open up. So we got new ones here, new ones here as well. Uh, one tip I got from you guys is um, on top of kind of wrapping the uh, existing branches with wire, people are actually suggesting moving the light because the plants grow towards the light, which makes perfect sense. And so that's what I did. Uh, it's not permanent because I'm, I feel like I'm gonna swap out the light fixture at this point, plant's getting a little bit too big. So I kind of moved the, uh, the light from this anchor to this one, and then I'm gonna lean it a little bit. And sure enough, the leaf started growing that way. I kind of wish I did this a lot earlier. And I feel like the wire is also almost time to uh, be ready to be cut off. And I got wire on this main branch, this small branch, and small branch right there. Looking on the side, I probably will wrap some wire this way, just so that I can keep the plant growing in this direction. And I do need to figure something out with the light because this is not a good look and I don't feel as, uh, I guess probably safe. I'm sure it's not gonna come off anything like that, but I feel like it'll look a little bit better and neater. And I may do a kind of like a light panel. Another thing that I want to try is that other people started chiming in saying that if I just kind of cut off, um, I guess a stem, that would uh, discourage the plant from going any higher. They'll start spreading out horizontally. And I feel like that's something I want to try. And another, man, I wish I got your name first before I started this video, but somebody else also reassured me saying that, oh, he was really nervous about chopping the, the mangrove off uh, until he stopped doing it and then it's no big deal. Uh, I wish I got your name. Thank you for your encouragement. I think I will go for it. Like this guy, I don't need, I don't really need it to go any higher. I think this is a good height. So I'll probably start lopping off these, um, these like these tops right here so you can start spreading sideways. But in terms of uh, fertilizing the mangrove, I have not done anything specific just for the mangrove. I, my focus has been on the macroalgae and as you mentioned, I dose chato growth. And I feel like whatever is in chato growth, probably like iron and stuff like that, also helps the mangrove. I do understand that mangrove also appreciate magnesium. So at some point I will be testing magnesium on this tank and dose some mainly for the mangrove tank, uh, mainly for the mangrove, not so much for everything else. Okay, so in terms of light spectrum, cause some people ask me, um, I base it off of AB plus and then I tweaked it so that it's more white. And the reason I do more white is um, purely cosmetic. I feel like my 145 gallon tank is pretty blue heavy. Not as blue heavy as what I've seen online, but it is pretty blue heavy for, uh, for my taste. So for this tank, I try to go a little bit more natural looking. So uh, even though it is still, you can definitely tell that there's like a blue tint to it, but it's not like straight up all blue. In terms of flow, I'm still running the MP10 Lagoon mode. I forget exactly how high I have it cranked up to, 
but I kind of want to turn it up a little bit more so that things have a nice sway to it. I feel like it's probably got clocked up a little bit. That's why things are moving as much as I'm used to. Overall, this tank has been a joy uh, compared to 145 gallon tank because 135, any small changes, I need to wait a couple of days for it to take effect. Where this tank, everything I do, it kind of impacts so quickly. The thing I'm focusing on right now is actually the stock list uh, because I only have one fish left. I Let me be honest with you, I was tempted to get one of the um, frog fish that appeared on Diver, Diver Stand on Live Aquaria. And it was actually a giant frog fish. I, my plan was to maybe keep him in this tank for maybe a couple months and then move it to the 145 sump and I eventually build a uh, standalone species only tank for it. But a um, couple issue. Number one, I still have that little female right here and that is not going to be a frogfish food. And that little lady is not going to do well in a large reef tank, so she's still here to stay. And number two, I'm not quite sure if I want to set up another tank yet. And if I were, do I want a frogfish tank or do I want a garden eel tank? Ah. So with that in mind, I kind of took a pass on the giant frogfish, even though it's super, super tempting. Now in terms of other fish that I could potentially add to this tank, I actually have a certain captive bred fish in mind. Sorry guys, the battery died, but I do have certain fish already in mind for this tank. And I feel like it's a fish that not many people have kept before. Um, that would do well in a macro LG setting. And most importantly, it's gonna play well with the remaining dwarf rainbow fish. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick update on the 17 gallon mangrove tank, and I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 p.m. Shop. Bye. This is the exact same strand that I've been keeping in all my reef tanks. 